Hey there, buds! Welcome back to another episode of Project Zomboid House Flip. My name is Damien Darkside. In this episode, we'll be going over the much requested factory storage shed, located at the southwest side of Riverside. The opening of the building isn't the most exciting, as it's more of the generic office type setting that you'll see a lot in Project Zomboid. However, it's the insides of the building that we really want to get to. After the office, locker room, and two bathrooms, we'll finally get to the one spot that we really want to see. The giant storage crate warehouse located at the back of the factory that is nice, wide open, with a huge amount of space. And after I take a quick little peek in the storage room, I'm going to take a nice good walk through the middle of this factory and zoom out. You're going to see that this place is absolutely loaded with loot. There's so many crates around here, and if you can't find that one sledgehammer here, well, there's a factory beside, you can go check it out. It's right to the north of this. If you recall the Mass Gen Fat Company warehouse video that I also flipped, these warehouses that have a lot of crates in them have that nice, good graded second floor. They're able to get these nice vantage points and see if there's any intruders into your home. Walking up these flights of stairs, we're able to get roof access, and this is essential because it allows us to get to the second defensive capabilities of this place, which is a nice, wide vantage point just in case if you do want to bring any weapons with you, or if you just want to scout out the area in case of a horde is coming at you. However, you only really need to worry about zombies coming from the trailer park, possibly from the factory, and if you don't clear it out, the storage factory, that's to the side too. But that's filled with loot, so you gotta want to go in there anyways. Because of these large layouts inside of these industrial buildings, and because it's so far removed from Riverside to the northeast, I classify this as a low industrial difficulty. Because once you've got this place locked down, there's not much that's going to be a threat to you apart from helicopter events. I like to personally play with helicopter events expanded mods, so that's one suggestion I would like to give you if you want to live out here but increase the difficulty a little bit. The isolation might be really appealing to you, however, and it's still accessible because you still have a fuel station to the north of this location. As we're leaving the building, I'd like to invite you to hit that subscribe button down below. You know how it is, you've been on YouTube. I don't want to bring up the graph. Alright, so here we go to our new house flip. Now the character I had in my mind when designing this place is a friendly mechanic that is servicing the entire community's needs. Because having a car is so critical in the apocalypse, people will come to them, giving them food, ammo, and supplies for their mechanical skill and being able to actually fix their cars. There are rumors of them even working on some military vehicles, but then again, those are only rumors. Using some of the wood from the crates, we're able to put walls underneath this platform and put the rest of them in here for our new storage area. I also put these new shelves in here so it breaks up the space and it looks a lot better. Around these shelves in the corner, we have our drag racing sign that somebody traded in order to get the new engine installed in their vehicle. We get to the top of the stairs to check out our new living room and bridge. I like to think that this is the hangout spot of everyone who comes to the garage. We've got electric guitars, an acoustic one. We have a nice space for them to all hang out. You can look over the railing, chat with the people downstairs. You could also make sure that you have a defensible position in case if zombies are able to get into the garage somehow. The roof we've converted to a message area so that helicopters above can see that I need noodles. Although if this was in real life, I would ask them to send me a new GPU because damn, my 1060 is screaming right now. But then again, I was probably asking for it when I placed this many modded items down on top of my roof. Over to the side here, I've installed some stairs so we could access the first floor. You look over the edge to the side here is just for some quick and easy access in case if I need to drop. I've converted the small space under the overhang for generator space so that it's actually sheltered a little bit. And here you can see our roof fields that are nice and safe from being stomped on by the zombie hordes. Over here I've converted this space to a barbecue lounge. I highly recommend that you start placing small frames of carpets and wood floors and then try to put little patterns in between so you can break up the space. You can really make it look nice. I of course used a sledgehammer and wood in order to create a new bridge and then put a rope over the side so we have easy access to the ground floor. Over to the side here, I've kept a couple more boxes from the storage room and created a new area that you're able to put all of the junk items that you can't use for recipes now but you want to save for later. Or maybe some broken tools or maybe some side furniture. The point being, it's not your main crafting inventory. 
And now as we come over to the door, we can enter the main building's foyer. Because this is an auto shop, I feel like they'd be crafting their own weapons. So here's a storage room for them to store all of their things so they can save on bullets by smashing zombies' heads in. And when you're tired from that, you can hang out in this new room I made to the side. It's got books, hot dog machine, Sega Genesis, VHSs, what else could you need to relax in the apocalypse? Then again, you could also be in a room with a matching set of the highest quality furniture, purple floors, and added lighting since there was none in this room to begin with. You could also watch TV in bed and eat a delicious meal that you just cooked off to the side in our new kitchen. If you want to make high quality meals, confidently that's able to last you a long time in the apocalypse, you need to be able to have a great quality kitchen. And in this one, I made sure that we put in a lot of storage for food, a shelf over to the side for canned goods, two sinks, an island to the side so people can eat while they watch you cook or you can entertain while you're cooking, and even use the front windows to see if you have any company coming by. And speaking about company, you guys have been the best company I could ask for. I cannot believe the support you've been showing so far for the videos, so make sure you put a comment down below if you like the build, and of course, hit that like button as well. So, going into the garage, we'll be going over to our favorite car, the El Camino, and drive somewhere. Who knows? Maybe we'll find some place that's nice and safe for us in the apocalypse. Maybe somewhere in Alaska. Who knows? Anyways, thank you all for stopping by, and I'll see you next time on Project Zomboid House Flip. Have a good one, buds!